My name is Maciej Perkowski, and I'm working in the Nordic Semiconductor as a software test developer. And today I would like to talk you about, tell you about Twister V2. And just a few words about myself. I've been contributing to Zephyr and to Twister in particular for roughly like two years. And um, while working on it, I realized they are kind of a niche, some of the issues that uh, might be easier to overcome with a newer version instead of adding new patches to the existing one. So I'm going to start briefly with answering three questions. So why we need Twister V2, how we want to approach it, and what is going to be done. And at the end, I'm going to show what is the current status of the prototype and a short demo uh, of this prototype in action. So the first, why are we even discussing Twister V2? We have Twister V1. We have a really nice talk yesterday from Ashta Grover. And I, like I said, I was also contributing for, to, to Twister for um, some time. But um, it seems that Twister it evolved in a reactive way. So there were needs, and there were added functionality on top of it. So in the end, it, it lacks coherent overall ar architecture. So the project is, has a low modularity. There are also several places in the code responsible for very similar stuff. Um, there are many long and hard to follow if else decision tree along the way, also in often repeated in various places and various models. And um, over the year, there were many hacks and workarounds applied to, to add new functionality and to make it work with the original uh, software. So in the end, I would say it's uh, pretty hard to maintain. And when you want to add any new change or, or to, to fix something, it requires quite high vigilance on all the other parts if you don't want to break anything, anything new. And um, I've heard from several developers that they tend to be reluctant toward contributing to the source code due to this overwhelming um, kind of, let's say, legacy. And uh, this is pretty harmful for the open source project. And also, um, I would say that there is quite a low test coverage uh, of the Twister itself, which means that uh, often it is tested in production. Uh, I think we've seen uh, several times that after uh, shifting or uh, after fixing something in Twister that is, or adding new function that uh, CI start failing for many uh, companies, for many people, and also for, for, for Zephyr itself. So um, this all of us brings that we want a solid framework to continue with a high quality to, for, for Zephyr. We're going to have a talk from David today about how the quality is assured. So, I think this will add on top of it that we want to also make the test testing framework uh, quality increase. So how we want to do this? And the idea is to use the popular and existing frameworks. You don't want to reinvent the wheel whenever it is possible. So um, also we would like to develop Twister and maintain it as a Python package. So an example like West is. So not all that part of the uh, Zephyr source code, but just as a, its own package. And we want to base it on uh, solid design pr principles, also to provide a high test coverage from the get-go to all the new imported functionality being added on. Uh, also, the crucial requirement, it has to be backward compatible with the existing Zephyr test base. But what is very important for me, we want to facilitate new feature additions. So for example, I would love to see uh, kind of interactive testing when we can send comments to the hardware and then get back some outputs and get interaction, which is not possible right now, and also pretty hard to add on top of the existing code. And also like kind of a more complex scenarios, for example, for the bootloader community, for MC Boot, for example, where we uh, build a bootloader, we flash it, and then we flash several other images and see how the test will, or how the whole scenario will respond. So right now, the only existing model in Twister is just build, flash, and verify. So this is the only scenario which you can get. So we want to expand it to provide more means for the developers. And also very important for me to see is to engage the community to make the project transparent and also to encourage contributors to join to the testing framework itself. So what, what, what is going to be done? And the idea is that uh, we would like to base it on a PyTest. And uh, according to the documentation, the PyTest frameworks make it easy to write small readable tests and can scale to support complex functional testing for applications and libraries. And the common question I've heard a lot is, and actually I was asking myself, like, isn't PyTest, you know, for Python testing, how it, relies, how it um, connects to the embedded testing? And in fact, we provide, and you can get a link here, 
the module for PyTest, which uh, wraps around existing uh, Zephyr tests given in the uh, this test case or sample SAMPLES, and there it turns them into PyTest tests. So it gives all the conditions that PyTest needs to verify it. So what are the benefits? Why PyTest? So uh, it has a couple of nice features, and one of it is that it is based on the plugin concept. So it means that it's, uh, there is only loosely coupled relations between the host and the plugin. So it is achieved by shifting the burden to the host side. So the host can only the host has to provide the what are the hang, uh, hook functions, the specification for them, and then the plugin developer they only need to know what it has to be the input for a plugin, the output for a plugin, and that's it. So the developer doesn't need to know all the details of the testing framework itself. So an uh, example of the plugin in action, you can see, for example, when you want to add a new report type, it is very easy in PyTest, and also uh, in like filtering of the test. In the filtration, you just have a list of the tests, and the plugin specification that say, okay, I'm gonna need the list of the tests, and in the output, I'm gonna provide what is the tests which were selected and which were deselected. And this is what is interested for the plugin developer. Also, PyTest provides a neat feature for uh, fixture decorator, which uh, ser serves to um, add a reusability for uh, common functions. And uh, fixtures have really modular approach because fixture can contain of many other fixtures. Also, they are they provide simplified and actually quite uh, safe to manage teardown logic where these fixtures are applied. And they are, what's more, they are easy to trace because functions, when they are using uh, fixtures, they need to explicitly declare which fi fixture is going to be used in a given test, for example. And then you can use like the setup only option, which is going to print you a whole test with all the fixtures that are going to be built in which order, and then how they're going to be teared down. So fixtures are very useful, for example, for code blocks like building hexes or for dude management. When you, for a dude, you can uh, decouple it for fixtures for setting up, connecting serial, flashing the device. Then you gotta get the device uh, yield to your test, which can interact with your uh, dude, and then afterwards it's gonna tear down all the fixtures and uh, dude will disconnect. And also Pytest is very popular. So in principle, we can assume we don't have to worry about the overall runner consistency or like stuff like test counting. And also being very popular means have a lot of eyes on it, a lot of people using it, developing. So it's kind of safe to assume that the backend is working, that there we ain't gonna uh, have major blockers or, or uh, completely unknown stuff uh, happening. And also what is very cool, there is already a lot of uh, functional uh, functionality available out of the box with already designed plugins since it's popular. If you think you want to add something, probably other people already thought about it and there might be already a libraries for it. So for example, like subsets, so to divide a test, uh, to divide your test uh, pool into different nodes that can run in parallel, it, ca it is handled with subset module, which can even give you optimization for your execution time. The parallelization can be handled with XDIS library, coverage with the coverage library, and also there are like different types for reports that can you already can plug in and get the result. And since it's popular, it can be more attractive to contributors because they're gonna use a tool that they already know. They don't need to have a high learning curve to new, new stack on top. So what is the current status? So I've divided it into three sections. So first is the identification, so the specification part. And we already done the provide the plugin which can automatically generate uh, PyTest test from the existing Zephyr test. Also, we are using the pre-filtering, which is uh, the same as the Twister V1 is using. So we load the platform specification, we load the test specification from the YAMS, and we are matching uh, and fitting what, what fits and what not. And also, we, provide, we implemented uh, examples of how to use filtering plugins to show how it works for applying uh, filtering based on tags or on a slow label. And for to do, I'm gonna just show an example because of course there's quite a lot to be done still. But example is to um, align, fully align the filtration, how it works, because like I said, we only added a couple of filters. And also, for example, the test uh, cases identification, so the tests which are defined as C code. For the execution part, uh, we are using WES interface to build and flash images. 
we ported the harness Z test, so to use the Z test uh, frames to validate test output. Also, we provided the abstraction layer for the device under test. And we implemented uh, native POSIX and hardware classes, which means you can already run it, Twister V2, on a native POSIX test and on hardware. Uh, it, it already works. Uh, we checked that parallelization works pretty well with XDIX, especially for native POSIX, because it's just going to spawn workers which are sub process So there is no interaction between them, which works really well. And we are also able to recognize the subtests, so the test cases from the Z test structures. An example of to do is to port console harness at QMODUT, and those are more or less straightforward because we already shown how the other one are done. The one which requires a bit more um, things, uh, thoughts is to parallelize on the hardware because uh, multiple workers cannot access uh, the same dude but it's not a blocker. It just need a bit more thinking how to use it with XDIST. And also kind of like benchmarking and comparing performance. And with, for the prototype, it looks like it's very similar. It's both Python. The Twister one is based on Python, so there shouldn't be much uh, differences in it. And on the reporting part, we provided the generic base class for reporting and specialized writers, which then translate your results into a given report type that you want. Also, um, so right now we can provide JSON and CSV output, but also there are already existing plugins uh, that can give you, like for example, interactive HTML reports. And there can be other plugins added uh, to customize existing one as a to-do or improve subtest reporting. So maybe instead of the summary, I would like to really enjoy, uh, really to welcome all of you to join the project and to add your contribution. And even if you don't want to add your own code, you can already go to the repo, which right now you can see it was ported to Zephyr Airtos to Twister. You can already start playing with the prototype and start sending your opinion and uh, how it works for you and what else would you like to see. Also, I've created a type of, um, let's say, Kanban-style uh, GitHub project where uh, you can see I wanted it to be more uh, transparent for the community to, and to engage the community. So that's why you can find the... Ah, oh, you don't see this. <laughs> oh, now you're going to see this. So, yeah, I just added a couple of tasks that I mentioned were like what can be... what is still in the design part, what are kind of more ready to already start implementing in progress and so on. So I, I think it's going to um, engage community more to see the status and, and getting involved. And the other idea is to use uh, the existing labels which GitHub supports for, uh, for the help needed and, uh, or help wanted and good first issue, because I think this is also what makes community getting attracted towards the project. So if I, I'm, I haven't been monitoring my time, but just like if you want, there, there's just a very brief uh, demo. Like I said, it's just calling PyTest for Python, pointing to the already existing uh, Twister uh, Zephyr test. We are saying we want to run it on native POSIX and different reports we want to see. It's loading the plugins. It's also nice that you see which version of the plugins are used in your, uh, in, in your configuration. And then you can see the output of the test. So you can see that they are like a kernel common dot nano 32 right now or the Misra. Those are the scenarios. And you can see also there are the sub passes and sub skips, which are the uh, when we recognize what is the output of the Z test structure when you have a, a single test cases. So we are also able to recognize them and give them their own statuses. And here is just an example of the report. This is a JSON report. And you can see also there is like a summary in the beginning showing how many test scenarios were executed or configuration or, and how many test subtests, so test cases were inside. And also some kind of hierarchical structure where you see what was the test scenario name and what subtests were inside the given test and, and some details for them. And on the right hand side, you can see an example of the interactive HTML report, and which is just out of the box, just installing the plugin. 
And of course, it might need a bit of more customization to properly count subtests. And also, as you can see here, it's just uh, it's pretty nice because okay, this is a static slide. But uh, you can click or uh, select or deselect what types of results you'd like to see and also expand some of them. And here you can see there were some failures and errors, but mainly this due to not all filters were applied. So I just run this on all kernel tests with what we have right now, and, and this is the result. So here are some references. And yeah, thank you for your patience and for listening. I have my first question, which I always ask on, on, on Twisters. Are we going to be able to run this in multiple OSs, like something other than just Linux? Uh, so I think right now it's already a, uh, possible to run on Windows. Okay. Clearly building, and probably, I guess, with flashing, it, it, uh, it, it should be possible. Uh, some parts won't be able, for example, like native POSIX or QEMU, because they, they are uh, POSIX-oriented. But I think also if, uh, if it's based on Pytest, I believe the, uh, the porting will be easier because it's just a common Python code. So I believe it will be easier to, to make it running on other OSs. Okay. Thank you for all the work. Module.yaml has a settings in there for providing a list of paths to test, direct test trees inside mm -hmm. of the module. Does Twister V2 follow that setting? I'm not sure. Uh, so, so I'm not sure if I got it correctly. So we are, so we are following the way how Twister V1 is working. So basically, uh, you give the directory where you want to scan for your test, and we are exploring this uh, so-called test, test case YAMs or sample YAMs, and based on these, we create the test list. Thank you. So uh, thank you first, uh, and yeah, nice to see PyTest uh, coming to Zephyr really. Uh, I have one question. Do you think that uh, it would be possible as well to have like tests written in Python? So from a, like running a Zephyr framework that actually writes, uh, communicates with the firmware and the whole test is written in, in Python? Yeah, I, I really hope so. The, there is already a plugin, or no, not the plugin, the, the, the harness for PyTest in, in Twister V1, but basically it's just calling the PyTest, uh, which, which does everything, and then just collecting the results from the report. So I think right now we'll be able to kind of integrate it more, to have a better kind of support for PyTest. And I would, like I said, I would really love to see kind of a more advanced scenario, it's not just uh, build Flash and see the result, but something where you can interact or do multiple flashes. And I believe with uh, Pytest, it will be easier. So, so we have some plans how to expand on it. Thank you. How are you testing this version of Twister? I yeah. know the previous one didn't really have any tests for itself, but it, that always felt like a uh, you know, it just grew naturally and then it became very complicated and then there were all these edge cases and stuff that I know we've run into. So I don't know if you're starting to yet or, or have tests for what's being developed. So yeah, so the idea is that every time we add new feature, I'm, I'm having a problem finding my mouse here, sorry. It's on the screen. Yeah, and it's on the other side, so yeah. So basically, if you, okay, I'm gonna not do, do it here. Yeah, yeah. If you go to the repo, I, I, I um, was trying so, so just Zephyrata slash Twister, uh, you will find the test folder. So basically, we already came with providing the PyTest test for the framework itself. And you can also you really easily implement this coverage uh, plugin, which can give you how much percentage is covered for, for the test case. So I think when I'll be kind of uh, driving and looking onto it, I will be really enforcing developers to add tests as well. So every time new functionality is added, it has to be added with proper tests for it. Uh, yeah, I, I need to test functional software. So for example, I have a light sensor and I have a, a, a lamp that I can control via Bluetooth to you know, turn on or off. Can, how easy can I put that in my test plan and for your harness to control that device beside the device under test? 
So unluckily, right now, it's not easy or almost not possible, I would say. So, but we are really looking forward to add uh, new functionality. So clearly, you would need to have a certain way of validating your results. So yes, yeah? so you would need a proper harness how, how to interact with your test. So this particular scenario, we don't have, uh, we didn't thought about it yet, but. Really, I think like due to the features of Pytest, like this uh, being based on plugins, and also like a fixtures where you can easily build your um, your your tests from uh, existing code blocks. I believe it would be easier to to add something just using Python and not uh, custom scripting. Can you speak to it? seemed like the fixtures was the way that kind of maybe the state machine of sort of the sequencing of, you know, selecting tests and then maybe, you know, in the case it seemed like it was like, you know, build, flash, output, so forth. Um, can you talk maybe, I don't know about sort of, A, how much flexibility that there is with that as far as different state machines and how you kind of define that? Is that just in code or how, and then, is, for example, if I wanted just to go up to like, you know, so we had the like um, uh, test only, you know, mm -hmm. options or like, so how, how does that kind of work just from that flow a little bit? So yeah, there, I, I think there are multiple questions inside that one. <laughs> and probably the simple answer is, is still to explore all of them. But uh, giving you the context of, so for example, uh, I mentioned like for the setup only, so you ask for, for test uh, only, but for, for example, for setup only, uh, I had it, but I, I deleted the slide to, for the time concerned. But uh, you, for fixtures, for example, you can have a really nice printout when you see which particular fixture is gonna apply, then your test, and then how they are tearing down. And also for the implementation, how we said why the different, we, for example, we want to use more of kind of design patterns. So for example, uh, in our code, we have the, uh, just the abstract base class for uh, DUT. And there is also a factory which uh, brings the adapters to life. And like I said, we, adapt, we provided the native POSIX port and the real hardware. So basically they all have, uh, for example, like flash functionality due to the abstract requirement. But native POSIX uh, will just uh, spawn a subprocess, and uh, the hardware will actually flash a software. So I, I think this also adds to your question. Okay. Okay. Well, we're, we're going to have to do a time check here because we've got two more presentations to go. But uh, thank you very much for this. Thank you.